so I can go. And you can't play like that. It gives you that kind of flutish kind of, you know. So cool. The satisfaction that I get from making music is being able to express myself, man. It's the most important thing for me. It's like, if I'm able to just get things out that are in my head, get them out, that's like a massive release. Some people go to the gym, yeah? And they come out and they feel good, that's good. I've got to go in the studio. When I was really little and I was writing music, it just made me feel fantastic. I, I, obviously none of it got released, I didn't care. I was just having the time of my life. When I started releasing and things got a little bit more serious and then there was a lot of pressure, record companies, this and that and all that, then it became a bit businessy and then I felt all this pressure to write tunes. And so I stopped writing music for about five years. My wife actually, she, um, she bought me a piano and she said, look, maybe just do this for a bit. And that was the best thing I ever did. I just sit there and play whatever comes out. And then I went, that's what's important. When you just write because you have to do it, because that's what you need to do to express yourself, that's the success, that you even get a chance to do it. Every bit of kit needs to do something that the other kit doesn't do well. And if you've got those bases covered, then you're good. For me, all these synths, they have a reason for being here. I've had this Moog three times. I've sold it and bought it back three times because I thought, oh no, I can do this on a plug-in or no, I can do that with my other synth. And in the end, I couldn't do that. It's the bass machine for me. It does all my bass lines and all my low mid rangey stuff. So I will never sell the Sub 37 because the Moog really is the only thing that can be a Moog. So it's never going to leave. The Hydra synth, for a few reasons actually, grabbed my attention. I was looking for a digital synth that sat in between all my analog gear and gave me a different kind of sound. It's very versatile, it does a lot of different things. The Hydra synth has just got this beautiful digital aspect that my other synths don't have. It's super easy to use, the way you can mold the waveforms into each other and stuff like that. But also it's got this ribbon feature that you can quantize to a scale. I mean, that's something I haven't seen before, only in modular gear, to be honest. This thing you can just jump on straight away and you can start without having to think about all the tech behind it. And I like that. Sometimes I don't make music, I just like sitting on the synths and just sound designing. I don't have to turn a computer on, I can just plug my headphones in, play around and just literally, you know, play around the synth and go, oh, that's a great sound for later on down the track somewhere. Because I've got a family, I've got young kids, sometimes it's like, this is your time to go in there and do something and nothing comes. And it's like, okay, so what can I do in this time that I, I, I'm not productive, I'm not being creative? I'll learn. So I will, I'll turn to YouTube and start learning things. Man, I wish I had YouTube when I was 15. I'd be a monster now. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm a super emotional person, so when I go to write melodies, if it's not blowing me away, then it's, it's not worth writing. For me, I just got to feel it at the end of the day. If it invokes a certain feeling in me, then I know it's going to do that to somebody else. What keeps me going is I'm still connected to a, a higher purpose that just makes me want to do it. It's something that you have to do. It's not in, even in your control. Just having that platform to express myself is super important. Mm -hmm.